Hi everyone, it's Emma from Lynx Injury. Um, just want to speak to you today a little bit about foam rolling. Uh, we've all got a little bit more times on our hands recently and I'm well aware that nobody's getting any hands-on therapy or definitely shouldn't be getting any. If you are um, able to get some at the moment, I'd seriously question the ethics of the therapist you're going to see. Um, anyway, so back to foam rolling. I imagine that quite a few of you have actually got some time at the minute to do some foam rolling and I've put together a series of some little clips if you do like some foam rolling. But I do want to speak to you about um, the importance of not just rolling and thinking that it's going to reduce some risks of injuries, etc. Uh, so as runners, exercise enthusiasts, crossfitters, as well as many other sports, it's probably entered the world at some point. Um, for a, either a warm up or a cool down or both or some injury prevention methods um so today i just want to speak to you about what foam rolling actually does what's happening to the tissue on a very basic level um and uh and will foam rolling reduce the risk of injury so yes there's some um good and uncomfortable parts of foam rolling but what do we believe is actually happening within the body um, so, uh, just rolling on a dense bit of foam. So, in a nutshell, um, then the the range of motion will increase from foam rolling, albeit it will be very short term. So, I think the evidence says about seven minutes. So, again, it's not too long really, but that opens us up then for some potential uh, strength and range of motion gains. However, with foam rolling, it's not going to get you any strength or visible gains that you can get within your sport um, or, or prevent you from injury. It's just going to open up a range. So our muscles don't control what the body does. Our brain controls what our body does. And that's really important to get across as well. So when we're talking about lengthening the tissue, it's the organs, um, in particular the Golgi tendon organs and the muscle spindles, that have a relationship between themselves to determine how much we can lengthen a muscle before it either has to recontract to protect ourselves or decrease what load we're able to lift to protect itself as well. Um, there's a bit more about that on my blog. I'd strongly encourage you to read it. Uh, it goes into a little bit more science, but I just wanted to give a bit of an overview of, um, of what I'm talking about on it, really. Um, so, our, like I said, our nervous system is the thing that controls, and that's the same for, for static stretching, for dynamic stretching, uh, voodoo flossing, um, anything else you can think of as well. Um, there's loads and loads of little stretching tools, gizmos, gadgets and bits and bobs out there now. Um, so with all the information I've just gave you, why would you necessarily bother foam rolling? Um, well, as I've said, it matters really what sport you're in as well. So if you're a runner, if you're maybe a cyclist, do you need that much mobility? Are you going to, I don't know run less run slower without more mobility is opening up some mobility really going to improve your times your speed it's not that well i don't think there's evidence any evidence in all honesty that um that supports that so i would probably concentrate on doing things that the scientific evidence does suggest help such as some more interval work or some more strength training etc um, so moving on to the sports that do require it, maybe some martial arts sport or again, um, I do some CrossFit a couple of times a week. So again, CrossFit, it's all about mobility, getting in certain positions, otherwise you'll get a no rep, a fail. So it's quite important to have mobility uh, within CrossFit. But is it enough just to foam roll and then expect that mobility to come with inside our training? Uh, and again, I suppose that depends on what level you're at during your CrossFit or your martial arts anyway. So my argument is, let's take the uh, typical overhead. So some people are not able to get their arms overhead, keeping their back nice and straight. So what happens is they end up leaning back, arching, tummy comes out, ribs flare up to get into this position. But if they squeeze everything and bring their posture down, their arms are somewhere here. 
So by releasing this area with a foam roller, which is really nice and it feels great, you maybe feel a little bit taller afterwards, then can I just all of a sudden get the bar up to here? Can I lift the same amount of weight? With opening yourself up to maybe a few other risks, then yes. So I'd always recommend um, putting mobility or your foam rolling into a mo more of a mobility slash accessory session. If you're warming up your thoracic region without reactivating it, you may end up in some damaging ways. So for instance, on a snatch with a wide bar, and I'm coming up. If I'm not used to having this, I might end up tipping back. Shoulders could dislocate. Again, these are all quite worst case scenarios, um, but you might just feel a little bit of a tweak around your pec, around the shoulder, um, or just not that ability to be able to control the bar as well. So as much as foam rolling is good for that side of things, it has to have an extra stimulus as well. So maybe some um, active band work after you've done something like that, or some, um, some just basic low weight, dumbbell work some barbell work and again the same way um with running really if you're doing a trail run and you've just increased your ankle mobility in order for you to maybe get into those um, positions uh when you're out trail running and not really sure where your feet are going to go if you've not got strength within that region now you've got a nice floppy ankle what do you think is going to happen um so my argument with the foam rolling i suppose i'm going off on a bit of a tangent now um but is do, can you just do the strength training or do you need to foam roll before you do the strength training and also if it's not from a strength base or opening up a new range why are you foam rolling um i would say from a relaxation purposes if it feels good for you brilliant and continue to do it follow some of the techniques that i've put on a video I do enjoy foam rolling. I find it quite relaxing. I listen to some tunes usually when I'm doing it. Um, but if you think, oh God, I've got to get back on that roller again. And you're not somebody who necessarily needs to improve your mobility. But actually by doing some eccentric, concentric, isometric loading, you'll be able to get some of these ranges um, and some strength or some speed output to get better at your sport. Why don't you concentrate 10 minutes on that instead of, uh, of jumping on the roller if you don't like both of them as equal? Again, if you're time poor, I recommend the strength and the activation over the foam rolling. Um, I sound like I've trashed foam rolling a little bit, which wasn't the intention. So I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, please, please respond. I've not really done anything like this before. So if you comment below um, put some thoughts, maybe some challenging questions and that'd be brilliant. Um, yeah, well, thanks everybody so much for listening to my eight minutes. Um, uh, if you want to have a little look at my blog, please do so. Take care. Bye.